Medic, the subject of our discussion today, is a name familiar to most of you, particularly those involved in fishing and gardening. And here it's very interesting because some people are familiar with this name, while others, thanks for watching. Podiatki came to me. These specimens are quite large. One is visible, while the other likely burrowed underground. Here's a radish for them to eat during the trip. Although they are the film's main characters, we'll address them later because I have something like this. Do you know what this is? Listen, this is a butterfly breeder. Some time ago, the team from Butterflies Poems contacted me. Here's their logo. And from what I found out, they deal with breeding and importing various developmental stages of different butterfly species. Both day and night butterflies and moths of various sizes wrote to me, asking if I would like a package. Well, you know me, I'm always eager for packages, so of course I agreed, and they sent me various interesting things, which I only found out about after the package arrived, so it was a nice surprise. Well. I didn't record an unboxing for you here, but I'll tell you in a moment what's going on because what's in the breeding box is really quite interesting and I'm really looking forward to it hatching. So listen, one of the main items in the package was this breeding box which I didn't have before. I used to have a similar wooden one with a mesh, but this new one can be folded flat which is amazing. And it opens here with a little latch from the top and you can raise all sorts of strange things inside. Among other things, I just received some chrysalises and two little boxes full of caterpillars. More on that in a moment. And now, in one of the boxes, I don't know which one, there are caterpillars of a moth called Samyacintia, but they're so tiny that I can't even show them to you. However, in the other one here, there are caterpillars of a large, really large, I would even say, moth, called Atacus loquini. And that name might sound familiar to you because the genus Atticus includes its cousin, Atticus atlas which is one of the most popular moths bred in the world. Yes, like the atlas, a huge one, supposedly with the world's largest wing surface, etc. Well, the larvae of this cousin were delivered to me and they're quite interesting. They're white with these little protrusions, as you can see for yourselves, really cool. For now, I'm feeding them ash, but I'll probably switch them to privet and then it should be okay. I hope they'll mature here with me and they'll be, you know, like that. Besides that, I also got cocoons, actually two cocoons and three pupae. The two cocoons also contain pupae. Hold on, I'll open them. Look at this. These two white bundles are actually cocoons. Inside these cocoons, there are pupae, those dark little lumps you can see there. And these cocoons belong to a species called Anterapolyphemus. However, these strange lumps, here you go, which are quite large, these pupae belong to the genus Gonimbrasia. Here's what an adult specimen looks like. I received three of these pupae, uh, two cocoons, with pupae inside. And now I'm waiting for them to hatch, because all these specimens are quite large as adult butterflies. So I'm waiting for them to emerge, and I hope I'll be able to show it on the channel in the future as well. The items remain in the containers. I also got a small envelope. Listen, inside this envelope, there's a dead, unfortunately, a dead female of a certain moth from Kazakhstan. Oh, right. See, I managed to unpack it. This is a moth belonging to the Saturnidae family. Just like all those caterpillars, those caterpillars, those pupae, those cocoons. All these moths belong to one and the same family, which is called Saturnidae. And most of them have those characteristic spots on their wings, which you can see here as well. And this is, oh my, what's its name? One female Neoreshenki. Exactly, this is a female Neoreshenki originating from Kazakhstan. I got a package like this, thanks a lot. Also check out their profile on Facebook, Instagram and possibly TikTok because they organize contests there, and right now there's actually a contest going on. At this moment, I don't really know what you can win, but it's worth checking out. The video likely shows butterfly developmental stages. Links are in the description. Moving on. The grand finale, which means this little bump. Come on, show yourself. All right, the whole touching story. The whole touching story. Skinny. Let's start the whole touching story about the mole cricket by explaining what a mole cricket actually is. Because you might say, okay, a mole cricket is a mole cricket, a mole cricket is a mole cricket, right? That's obvious, that's simple. But if you had to classify the mole cricket into some order of insects, I don't know if it's a butterfly, a beetle, a cricket, a dragonfly, a wasp, or a bee. What is a mole cricket? Which, by the way, as an interesting fact, has a Latin name that consists of two identical parts, meaning the genus and species names are the same. And it is called Grillotalpa grillotalpa. Uh... 
And if you've ever seen an insect like, for example, a field cricket, which normally occurs in Poland, or a great green bush cricket, or a singing bush cricket, or other bush crickets, generally orthopterans with long antennae, that's exactly the order of insects to which the mole cricket belongs. The mole cricket is a very close cousin of crickets, a slightly more distant cousin of bush crickets, and an even more distant cousin of insects like grasshoppers and locusts, among others. Grasshoppers and locusts. This whole order of insects, which we know for their chirping and jumping and for having wings, they can fly a little, though not like butterflies, but still, they are called the order of Orthoptera. This order is divided into two groups, which we can distinguish from each other by the length of their antennae, and they are called long-horned orthopterans and short-horned orthopterans. Among the short-horned ones are, for example, locusts and grasshoppers, while among the long-horned ones are mole crickets, as well as crickets, all sorts of very different crickets. This suborder also includes bush crickets, katydids, and a whole lot of other long-horned orthopterans. Some species, particularly the long-horned ones, can reach enormous sizes. Here are a few examples of such species that we can find. For instance, in Malaysia or South American forests. And they are gigantic, and many of them have the ability to perform what's called stridulation, right? Oh no, my washing machine finished washing. Ta 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 ta. Oh, ta ta ta. Coming back, a lot of orthopterans have the ability to stridulate. Turquoise pojutki, among others, have the ability to stridulate, which means making sounds. Let's discuss the appearance and characteristics of our turquoise podja deck, including why opinions vary on it. Well, as we've already mentioned, the turquoise podja deck is an orthopteran insect, which means it's an insect, right? Since it's an insect, it has all the features that insects should have. So, we have three basic body parts. The main body parts are the head, thorax, and abdomen. The thorax is further divided into the prothorax, mesothorax, and metathorax. In the case of Gryllotalpa, Gryllotalpa, the prothorax, that whole visible part, that sort of bulge, which is like its, I don't know, shoulders, let's call it that, this part is very, very well developed and heavily armored. The abdomen of Gryllotalpa, Gryllotalpa is segmented with less chitin armor, and they possess wings. Yes, like, well, not all, but like most orthopterans, they have wings. What's more, Gryllotalpa, Gryllotalpa are capable of flight, especially during the phase when they are looking for a mate to reproduce. One of their distinctive traits is extremely elongated abdominal appendages. And of course, what is probably the most characteristic feature of the mole cricket, which are its front digging claws that are adapted for burrowing in the soil. The hind legs, which usually in orthopterans are used for jumping. Yes, all those grasshoppers and locusts use their hind legs specifically for jumping. In the mole cricket, they are not used for jumping, but rather for pushing itself off the ground while digging tunnels. Interestingly, it digs tunnels just big enough for its body to fit through, like a barrel and a bullet. So it can't turn around in those tunnels, which is why it has developed the ability to move both forward and backward. So now, why don't people like them? Now, people don't like them because they used to dislike them even more in the past, when there were really a lot of these mole crickets. The mole cricket, once a common insect, is now less prevalent and no longer poses a significant threat to crops. Exactly. Mole crickets are omnivores, which means they eat both meat, most often insect larvae, some grubs, earthworms, and other larvae. An earthworm isn't a larva, but you get the point. They also won't turn down a plant-based diet, like the roots of shrubs, roots of various plants, and so on and so forth. And that's exactly why, for example, gardeners don't like them, because mole crickets nibble on their shoots and roots. Uh, and why do they do that? That's a good question, too. In general, mole crickets, the female mole crickets, are very good mothers, and when they lay eggs, because mole crickets lay eggs, there are about 300 eggs in a clutch, something like that. When the female mole cricket lays eggs, she takes care of those eggs. And now, to keep them warm, that is, to keep the eggs warm, she came up with something like this. She gnaws on the plant stem so that the plants dry out, and so that they allow the sun's rays to warm the eggs. When the plant dries out, it falls over and the sun's rays warm the eggs, which is pointless since she could lay them on the surface. But to protect the eggs, she lays them underground. But, as is usually the case with mole crickets, there's another side to the story. Mole crickets are apparently a very good bait for catfish. Uh, I don't know, I don't think I've ever gone fishing in my life, so I don't really know how it's done, what it's like, and so on. So. But I've heard that anglers are really fond of mole crickets as bait. And honestly, judging by the appearance of these insects, I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case. You know, they're kind of juicy, plump, just perfect as bait. Since the video is titled Facts and Myths about Grillotalpa Grillotalpa, you already know the facts. Now it's time for the myths. The only myth I've heard about this insect is that it's deadly dangerous and venomous and its bite will kill you. Well, that's not true. Of course, the mole cricket, just like other orthopterans, has chewing mouthparts that can nibble on roots and can even bite us if we really tried. 
And these mandibles in orthopterans are usually quite strong, especially in long-horned orthopterans. And now, fun fact number N, I don't know which one, in this episode there's a certain species of orthopteran called Lachin Brodownik. This species has that name because I once heard stories that it has such strong jaws that a long time ago warts were actually removed with its help, so you can imagine it bites quite hard. Uh, it's the same with Turkish Pojadek, it also has pretty strong mandibles and could possibly bite us, but apart from that, it's absolutely harmless to us since it won't bite, sting, jab, chew, burn, or do anything else unpleasant to us, except maybe cause a bit of damage to our garden, but now, you know, that's not really the case anymore because Turkish isn't as common as it used to be. I understand that some people may have negative experiences with moles due to the damage they can cause to plants on their property. However, it's important to note that moles are not considered a nationwide pest in Poland. So if you ever come across this insect, which by the way is one of the largest insects in Poland because it can reach almost 2.36 inches, that's really a big insect for Polish conditions. So spare its life, don't kill it, it really doesn't cause that much damage to make its life miserable here. Maybe it's not the most charming creature, but it's still a very interesting one and with that knowledge, I'll leave you here. The mole cricket is an interesting insect that lives underground. Goodbye for now.